Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to take another look into the vector class using C++ programming. And so we're going to create our own custom class. So we're basically going to rewrite eh, half or more of the vector class and get a look to see what is actually going on under the hood and the logic of how we do the operations that the vector class does for us. So I don't necessarily have a PowerPoint presentation to go with this, but I am kind of just going right out of the Jesutis, bring it over here, Jesutis second edition uh, C++ standard template library book. I'm basically going out of chapter seven, section three, titled vectors. What do you know about that? And I'm just going to look through the functionality and just at a cursory first pass level, just take a look at all the things we can do without having to scratch our heads too much when it comes to implementing these things. So we're not going to do iterators, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, but we'll do other parts of this. So I have my Visual Studio up and running. I don't have anything more than a main just starting out right here. And so just pushing forward, a vector, of course, you know, go back to our previous, you know, go back to your previous lectures on arrays and vectors and standard template library vectors if you need more information about how, you know, the, the starting point for this. But we're starting out with the idea that we need to have, what if I had a pointer? Let's just say we're going to have, we're just going to use integers for our entire collection today. So what if I said I could contain an, an integer pointer and I'll call it array. And then down here, it's like, well, how many elements would I need to represent any array ever, right? Why don't I just use, why don't I just set up two billion of them, right? So anybody can use this thing ever. And that, that's a ridiculous statement. Well, how about I just set up five elements? But like, well, no, that's a ridiculous statement as well. And so we, we understand that a, an array by itself is statically bound, meaning when the, when the program is compiled, we know how much space we set aside for this thing. But as we know, the standard template library allows us to dynamically change the size of these things. And we can actually make this happen today. And so dynamically allocating is the way to go. So I can say something like array equals new int. And I can just, let's just say we start out with five elements. Let's just start out with five elements in there. And I'm, I'm keeping these up here as globals just for a brief moment because in a, in a little bit of time, in a minute or two or however long, we will be pushing and moving this information and moving this code over into its own class. So just to say, this, these, will be, these will be the member variables. I'm just saying it outright. So what if I wanted to take this array and I wanted to basically do like a pushback operation? Tell me exactly what uh, element should go in the first spot. How would I do that? I would have to do something like array and then I do array zero equals value, right? Something like that. And so then, well, what would you do? How would I do it if I had a second one? I go array one equals equals five or something like that. Yep. Okay, that's fair enough. But how would we do this in a general case? How would we? How do we know that we're supposed to put an element in the zeroth position? And then once we put one in there, how would we know we're supposed to put one into the the one position? How are we supposed to know? Well, how about we maintain a variable? And so size is a misnomer here, but it is, it is what we're thinking about here. We're saying size equals zero. And then we can say size, and we can say plus plus size, and then we can say size here, right? And then I can say plus plus size. So every step of the way, the size is the correct value. How many values have I put into this array? Zero is the starting point. Once I add one, yep, I increase it to one. And once I add another one, I increase it to two. So this, this can be seen as, as a capacity, if you want to see it that way. Capac oops, capacity, int capacity. And just for the sake of this here, I'm just going to say the capacity is 5. Because that's what we were starting out with. And so capacity is 5, size is 0. We're setting up a whole new array pointer. Let's just make sure we delete the thing outright when we're done as well. Array. I have to make sure I use the array notation delete for that. Okay. So, so far, so good. And so now it's a matter of just what, you know, so every time I'm going to go and try to add a value, I could, I could create a little function here. I could call it pushback. And let's just, 
let you know, say like what you know, since we're treating this almost like a member function at this point, we don't need to pass in any of these. We we can use these globally, or we can use these public or privately once we get into using the class. But just stealing this idea here, I'm just going to say, oh yeah, I do need to push a value into it. I do need that, but I can just say something like this, right? I can just say array of size equals value, and then plus plus size. So then all of this kind of falls away. And just to initialize this, I can kind of do this up front here and just kind of just start reducing and changing and moving stuff around. And I can I could even technically, I guess I could technically move this too. Well, I guess you well, I'll just leave it alone. Because that's a little more dynamic than everything else. And so I can just go ahead and just say pushback three, pushback five, and so forth and so on. But now the fun is, what if I just start using a for loop for this? And I say for int i equals 1, i is less than 100, plus plus i. And I just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, right? You're like, well, what's going to get, right? And I run this, and I get, oh, I get some kind of trigger to breakpoint. Am I even allowed to see? Let's see, can I get to, can I even get to the, can I even get to the call stack? Here we go. Nope, it won't even, it doesn't even tell me anything. Like this is just complete, complete garbage. And that's because, as you might expect, the capacity of this thing is five. There's five elements set aside. And so for the first five elements, I'm actually I'm kind of curious where when it crashes. So here's I of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Uh oh, this is still working. But again, coming back to this idea, this array, like it's only meant to hold five values, and the, and, the, the, and the fact that it's been, it's already however many in here, 74 units in, but it's not even crashing yet, this is scary, because it's overwriting something sitting in memory. I mean, it could be something we need. It could be whatever. I don't know. Let's just, can I hold this down? Let's see. There we go. So, of course, it's going to break. And so for when, when, there's, when there's space set aside for this value to be pushed into the array, this is a totally legitimate thing. But what will happen if we run out of space? And that's where, that's where our first step is. And then we might as well take this and start working our way toward uh, just creating our class structure. So I'm going to take a head and say new item. I'm going to create a header file called vector. It's our vector class. And start stealing some of this stuff. Class vector, public, private, constructor, all this stuff. Okay, so private, uh, I'm going to keep track of an integer pointer under the hood, call it array. Uh, that's all I basically need. Oh, no, so the other two variables here are int size and int capacity, as we know. So I'll put these up here. So, you know, size is 0, capacity is 5. Size, capacity, int pointer for the array. And we'll need a constructor, so we'll need a vector. We'll just use a default one for the moment, and then set it up, and then we'll figure out if we need others. And then we are going to need a destructor for this thing, because we're going to have to destroy this memory. That's coming back to this. That's this delete is basically that. Okay, so we have everything going. We can set up everything, quit act, you know, quick actions and refactorings, and create this thing. Create vector.cpp, and there we go. And so now I can drag this over a little bit, too. And so coming back here, I can say, get rid of these three guys. But we need to fill in those details. So I have to say, OK, the, we're just going to say the size is 0 outright, right? There's an empty vector. The capacity is going to be 5. And the array is going to be something that points to a new int. And its size is the capacity. And then nothing here. So we've established, at least for the moment, we don't. I don't. 100% remember if we're going to need more member variables. But for everything we have right now, they're all set. The size is 0, the capacity is 5, and we set up a 5-unit, a 5-element array on the back end. And when I go ahead and destroy this thing, I'm going to have to delete that array. And since everything inside of here are just normal ints, I don't have to do any extra work. I just have to delete the pointer to that memory, and everything's going to work out just fine. And so that gets rid of a lot of this stuff here. 
as you see, gets rid of this guy and gets rid of a lot of other things. Okay, so now everything is broken, and so now we can establish, oh, yeah, we got the destructor and constructor, and now we can establish at least the beginnings of this uh, pushback function. What is the value I want to push back? And so just to get things going here, I can just steal this guy, bring it over here, and just say, okay, oops, okay, vector. pushback value and exactly that. Here we go. And so now the to-do here is what if it's already filled. And so coming back here, we go, okay, this is set, the, we've already nude this up, we push, 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 and we still can break it a hundred ways from whatever, but I, right now if I include vector, and I say give me a vector v, and then v dot pushback, 99 and v dot pushback, whatever. At least for the first five of them or whatever, we don't have to necessarily worry. We can't actually use IntelliSense to see this. Oops, can't. Uh, because vector v, it only holds a pointer under the hood, so I can only see that there's a 99 at that memory address. I don't get to see everything else that comes after it. I would have to write a function to handle that. But I've taken everything we talked about six minutes ago or whatever, and now we have a, the beginnings of something here. I have a default constructor that sets up an empty array or empty vector, empty, you know, empty array under the hood. I can delete it when everything is said and done because I can put a breakpoint here, run the program, and there it goes. It hits the destructor when this goes out of scope. And so the, every, all the memory will be released and there'll be no memory leaks. And then the pushback functions for right now do what they're supposed to do. So we're looking good here. Let's continue on. We'll come back and do the pushback here in a little bit. So let's take out some of the easier member functions. I'm looking at section 7.3.2 here and say like, okay, inside of my .h file for vector, right now I have pushback, but what if I had something, a bool function for empty? And what if I had a int function for size? And what if I had a capacity function, an int for capacity? And so those are the three major ones. There's a lot more listed in here. Max size, we're not going to worry about. Uh, we're not going to do any reserving. We're just going to we're just doing the bare bones minimum just to get the point across. And we're not going to do any of the relational operators. How would I know two vectors are equal and not equal? One, how do I know one's less than or greater than the other, and so forth and so on? But these are very simple. These are basically our get functions, right? Almost this almost essentially our get functions. So if I generate them here and put them down here, empty. I would just have to say, the thing is empty if size is equal to zero. That's it. Boom. Done. And so for size, I just want to return size. And for capacity, I just want to return capacity. Why is it, why is it screaming at me red? Hold on. Let's see. What is going on here? Why is it screaming at me in red? What is going on? Rebuild this. Let's see. The legal index. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> oh! I love, I love, uh, I love C plus sometimes. And the problem is all these little errors, and this happens occasionally. Thank goodness I remember this thing right because this the first couple times this was a pain in the butt. That the variable name size and the function name size are the exact same name, and that's a problem. And because the compiler can't figure out what's happening, so I'm going to use lower cases for the variable names, and then. I should have renamed them over here. I could, have done, I could have been smart about it, but I wasn't. So I'm just going to go in real quick and change everything up. And so that way, there's no, there's no despair. You know, there, there's no problem between all of these things. Here. Okay, that should handle that problem. And then the functions are done. These are just little quick little one-liners. Because it's empty if size is zero, it's not empty if size is not equal to zero. So the result of this will kick me back. The size is the size and the capacity is the capacity. And we've done that whole section, you know, give or take, whatever it is we want to do. And for testing equality, all we would basically do, well, let's see, should we do it? Why not, right? Bool function. Bool operator equals equals. All right, and I can test on a const... Uh, const vector reference RHS. I'm LHS, it's RHS. And so I can implement this. It's not too bad. I'm thinking, like, should I do it? Eh, why not? And so in this case, if my size function does not equal 
RHS's size function, then they're not equal because that's like the first rule here is that the sizes have to be identical. And uh, capital S, all right. Okay, what's the problem now? We build this again. What is the problem? The object has type qualifiers. This is function size or just that size. What did I not do correctly? I'm so confused. This one's okay. It's okay with this size function. It's not okay with this size function. Let me take a look and find it. All right, so I jumped the gun a little bit because of the way constness works. And as they push back, changes things, these change things, but empty size and capacity doesn't. So I can throw some const in front of this thing. And I guess I can test for equality with the const as well, because it shouldn't, you shouldn't change anything while you're just testing for equality. And so I can, oops, I can put this back and steal this and put this and make this better again. And that, I think, fixes up that error. Yes, it already is fixed up down here. And that's because I had a const, and I was using a non-const function. You can always put more const onto something, but you can't put less const onto something. So once it was const, you can't be like, unless you use const cast, you can't just be like, forget const. And so now it's all fixed up. So the first item here was saying, okay, if the sizes one way or the other are different, then it's not equal. And then, so what, so what else would you do then? Now you say, okay, if I make it to here, then I know there's the same number of, of properties here. There's the same number of elements between both sets. So I could say, okay, let's test each one of them. And so if the, oh, we don't, oh, shoot, that's the fun of this. We don't have the square bracket notation yet. So, okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but if I could, I, but, I, but it is a private variable here. So I could say if array at the i location does not equal rhs.array at the i location, then return false. And if I make it through this entire loop, then I have to, then I have to admit it was true. So the sizes have to be equal, fall through, every element has to be equal, and then I can say that the two vectors are equal. And if any step along the way I find a problem, I kick out immediately and return false. And that's, that's a pretty good representation. It might, might, might not be the most efficient way to go about it, but at least it is, it's pretty efficient when it comes to just a, a, an understanding and explanation of what's occurring here. And so if you, you might think this is really difficult, you're like, how about not equals, right? You're like, how hard could, you know, this has got to be really difficult. i got to rewrite my code. i got to do all this. Well, why don't I just, why don't I just return the not of uh, star this equals RHS? Does that, does that follow through here? Because I'm just testing, I'm just taking whatever the equal operator is and just reversing that. And so I'm saying, look at me and look at the vector that you passed in and tell me if they're the same. And so this star of this just means me. It re re removes the pointer, turns it into a reference type for us. And so it uses this as the left-hand side. This is the right-hand side. And it just goes to town. And so let me make sure this builds up and then we're ready to move on. And so this is true of all the, all the operators. That's why you only need a couple of the operators and everything else can be derived for you. Equal, not equals can be derived from equality and greater than or equal can be derived from less than because if you derive less than, all you have to do is not that. And then there's other ways too. So I believe you only need less than and equality and you can gather all the other four from just doing manipulations like this of those two operators to make it work. But this seemed really hard. It's, it's a little more complicated, right? The symbols are a little crazy, but it is, but it gets the job done and I don't have to duplicate my efforts. So again, if you wanted to, then you could go ahead and do the rest. But that's all I want to do for those kind of vector operations and for the section uh, 7.3.2. So one more thing I want to do before I start moving into that pushback function and get, get, get into the actual deeper functionality of everything is to create maybe a couple more constructors here. And so we need the copy constructor. So I can say, give me a const vector reference right hand side. So there's that, the, the, you know, that's a very common copy constructor. So I can copy all the data. And then I can use a couple others here where I can say, I want to take a vector, tell me how many elements, and tell me their initial value. 
And I can, by, I can combine two. If you look at here, there's two separate constructors. I can combine them into one just by using that default value because I can say, oh, because it does that anyway. So I can say, give me 10 elements that are value 0. I could just put vector 10, or I could put 10, 9, and it should be able to initialize everything like I want it to. So this is, uh, I like this idea. So let's go ahead and finish this up, and then, uh, then we're ready to push on again. Okay, so cons, 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 boom, boom, boom. So the, the key here is you don't know how big the array is under the hood for these other vectors, because right now they're 5, but the reality is, it could be any size once we get this thing going. Once it's actually running, it could be 5 or 10 or 100. We don't know what the size of this thing could be, so we have to make sure we do this exactly right. And so the size, oops, the size of this thing as I'm copying over is going to be rhs.size. Because the whole point of this is to make sure everything is essentially equal on the other end. And so then I can also say, oops, comma, and then I can also say my capacity is equal to the RHS's capacity. And at least from when it comes to setting this thing up, the array is going to be new int. And for the moment, we're just going to say capacity. because And we just figured that out here. So we just filled this in so we can do this and say, OK. And then now what we have to do is just go in and copy all the values. So for int i equals 0 i is less than rhs dot size. We don't have to use capacity because if you're not using six or seven of these elements, then who the heck cares? Expression must call to pointer to type, capital S. Okay, and then all we're going to do then is just say, okay, my array at the i value is going to be equal to rhs's array at the i value. We're just going to copy element for element. I believe that's that's where we need to be from that, right? We're just and so if I just passed a pointer around, then I would have one block of memory, but I'd have two separate vectors pointing to that. I wouldn't have two separate arrays under the hood. And that's not great, right? Because if either one of them change values inside of there, it affects both, not just the one that it cares about. And so we want to make sure we do what's called a deep copy here, so that if I have a vector with an array under the hood, I create a second one and copy everything over, so there's two separate arrays now. And so that covers this whole idea. And so now with this one, the same kind of idea goes here. I'm just going to say the size is going to be equal to the number of elements. Same for the capacity. We're just going to fill it up. Or maybe elements time plus 5. Add five spaces, so if anyone needs extras, if you're going to push, 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 at least there's a little bit extra. And then maybe here, just say array new, like before, new int capacity. Oops, in square brackets. And then in here, just like before, we can steal this guy. And we can just say, okay, fair enough, let us, that keeps that keeps going up on me here. RHS is, oh, just my plain old size. And then just say um, my array at the i value is equal to value. That's all I need to do. And so we can test this thing out. But first, before we test things out, we should figure out a way we can print all the elements because we're going to need this, especially in dev mode. And I know vectors and all the standard template libraries don't have print by default, but we can do that as well. So let's get that, and then we can test all of this out. So down here, I want to take over the O string. I probably need to include IO string. Yep, I'll need to include IO string. Come on, I hate it. Don't you hate it when you can't see what's going on? IntelliSense helping too much. Okay, so I want to pass a return an O string, my operator, arrow, arrow. I'm taking my O string as my first parameter. Oster, and I'm taking a const uh, vector reference RHS. Okay. Turn green on me, please. Oh, friend. i got to throw friend in front of that. <laughs> All other things, i got to throw friend in front of that. Okay. And then let's define it. There we go. And let's go ahead. And just for the sake of this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a little more complicated than I probably should, but it's going to be good for testing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say... For every int value i is equal to 0, i is less than 
and uh, i is less than my size, I'm going to go plus plus i, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the value at that location. And so I'm going to print out RHS, I'm sorry, yeah, RHS at the i location. And then I'm going to put a space. Okay, and then when I get to here, and I guess we'll fix if there's an error. Oh, RHS that stuff. Sorry, RHS that stuff. And then what is the problem? Is there an actual problem here? We'll see. If, actually, is there a problem? Let's see. Build clean. We write a lot of code. Oh, RHS dot array. Much better. I'm like, is that a real error? Sometimes IntelliSense doesn't clean up after itself. Okay, good. So we got to, and then we also have to return Oster. And then what? Oh, see how? Got to return. Got to do this to Oster. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print to Oster. I'm going to print just a couple bars, and then I'm going to do the rest here with capacity in mind. And so we'll be able to see the whole array, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be able to see what has been allocated for the sizings, and then everything else that's just kind of sitting there being unused also. So I can say this is equal to size, this is less than, oh, all right, just that size again. Sorry. Ah, come back. And then RHS.capacity, because they can be totally different things, print out I again. And then, uh, just for the sake of this, oster to end line. And then return oster. So that's pretty complicated, but it's simple, and it's, it's printing out all the elements that I'm actually using, and then putting a demarcation line in there, and then showing me everything else along the way. So now we can test this thing out. So let's go ahead and see if all of our hard work has paid off. Okay, so coming back to main then, I could do... I can just do C out V now, something you can't do with the normal vector class. Look what I can do. Okay, and then we can try this out here and here. Let's just take a look now. And let's see what comes up for us. And so as you can see, when I first have an empty vector, there's nothing in here. So it prints nothing, then the debarkation, and then it gives me five elements because that's, that is there. It's uninitialized data. We don't need to initialize it because we're not using it. We're going to initialize it when we start using it. And when we push back, you can see the 99 goes in and now we have four spaces. The 199 goes in after that and now we have this working. So we're, we're, on, we're on pace here. And so we can test out some of these other things here. I can say, okay, that was that. What if I have uh, 11, 11 uh, units all with the five values? And so there you go. You can say there's there's 11 fives, and remember we added five extra spaces with our code over over here. Elements plus five. So no matter what I do, uh oh, why is that green? Buffer of overrun while writing to array. Uh, that will actually be okay. So I'll just I'll have to look into that later. But nothing. I don't think anything's screening out. We'll have to see. Okay. So then coming back and then. Looking at this again, and then I add the 99 and the 199. Again, it's the same deal, and because there's extra elements, we can go ahead and do that. And so, let's see, and then if I want to test this out without the 5 and just test it with zeros, give me 11 zeros, there we go. So then that constructor works. And so the last item here is to try this now, is just to say, okay, give me the copy constructor, give me a vector w and print out, print out this w, and I'll eliminate all the others just to prove, just to make sure we're looking at the correct one here. And so this should be, and and that's exactly what it should be. There should be 11 zeros, a 99, a 199, nothing, and then three empty empty uh, empty deals here. So yes, all our constructors are are working, and the pushback is working. All of our code. So we tried this this constructor, we tried this constructor, we tried this constructor. And we, we know that the destructor works. You can put the, if you, if you don't believe it, you can go in here again. And there it is, one time, two times, and that's it, because there's two vectors that get destroyed. And empty, size, capacity, those are working. Equality, okay, if you want to test for equality. Um, we'll have to do the copy assignment operator in a little bit, so maybe we'll, we'll come back to that in a couple minutes. But you can see that everything everything is starting to come in. Hopefully it's kind of clicking a little bit of what's going on. 
And uh, so we can test this in a little bit once we have a little bit more going, so a little bit more of a moving target. But this is going to be so helpful because we can take a look at this thing. We can take a look at the, in the contents of this thing while we're running the program, as opposed to having to debug it or do all sorts of crazy stuff to get it to go. So one last constructor, a newer constructor, part of the 2011. I, sh I guess I should should stop saying newer, but it was like a, almost like it feels like almost like a revolution in the programming language when 2011 came out. And uh, but anyway, I would wouldn't it be cool to set up a vector like this? This is how you can do things with the true vector and sets and all of the standard template library collections. So wouldn't it be cool if we could do the same thing? And it's giving me an error here saying that I cannot. Uh, there's no constructor that matches an argument list, and this is actually considered what we call an initializer list data structure. Again, you can look, this book is amazing, the Jesutis book is amazing when it comes to understanding all the little nitty-gritty details with this stuff. So what I did, just to show you, I went ahead and already created the code, because I just, I didn't want to hem and haw through it, since I've never done it before. This is my first time making this thing work. But as you can see here, there's this structure called initializer list. And so that, that fixes this up. <laughs> it won't link at the moment because my code has commented out the actual implementation, but you can see it's happy about this, that it, that's actually an initializer list structure. And so I can pass that along. I don't think I have to, now you got me curious here. Do I pass it by const reference? It doesn't change anything, okay, cool. So, because I'm not gonna be modifying this thing, so pass it as a pointer, don't pass it as an object. And so coming down here, the code is like almost identical to everything else that we've done. It's just uh, it's just a little fancy here. Let me see. Let me just pass this in by const reference like we did a minute ago. And you can see here. So I just I just use the functionality we already wrote, and we can actually make this work for any class. So I pass in this initializer list that has who knows how many elements in it, and we start out by saying, okay, the size is zero. Let's we'll just start out with saying the size is zero, and say the capacity is whatever's inside of this list plus five. So we're gonna take whatever we're gonna copy everything over, because I can't just I wish I could just copy directly into the array, but I'm not allowed to do that. So I'm gonna have to make I'm gonna have to waste my time making a copy. But so the capacity is that, the array, we set up so that the array has that much space. And then we just go ahead and say for every item in the list, for every element in there, just push it back, push it to the back. So the first element will be first, the second will be second, the last will be last. And we don't have, to, even with this, we don't have to worry because we're never going to go past the capacity because we already have that accounted for here. So even right now, this works perfectly fine. And so just to come back now and say one, two, three, four, five, and print out what I've got, it does that. And there it is, one, two, three, four, five, and there's my breakage, and then five extra spots. And then just to say I can I can do whatever I want. Here. Whatever. Here, here's eight elements or nine elements or whatever. There they all are in numeric order, and then five extra spaces set aside for the extra capacity to keep be but being able to push and push. And so I just thought that was kind of cool. And that pretty much covers the uh, the constructors that are you know important for the time being. So I've got four separate constructors going for us. Default, which just sets up a blank empty one with capacity five. Copy constructor, which copies everything over. Um, so maybe even the copy do that. Maybe the copy constructor can have capacity plus five as well, just to be safe. Because if I copy over, then I, I probably want to I probably want to do stuff with it. So why not that, right? So. There's my capacity, and this is already kind of doing it because size is zero, capacity is five. So it's already size plus five, you know, whatever you want to think of already. So we're, we're getting there. I, I still got to look into this morning. One of the, haven't found anything online just yet that screams out what's, what that is tell, trying to tell me. But that co covers constructor, destructor, and everything in the first two pages. And now we're ready to push forward. All right, so that pushback. This is like the biggest to do. Before we add any more functionality, we probably should go back and try to fill in what's going on here. So I want to be able to push back until the capacity, and then what happens, right? Like if this was just a static array, we would say, oops, I can't put any more in. So I probably throw an exception, or I don't even know what would happen, crash my program or just halt my program because we're out of space. But because we're doing this dynamically at runtime, my program can now ask the operating system for more memory. We can get more memory, and then we can copy everything over and then add the new element. And so this is perfectly fine if the size is all, or 
yep, if my size is already less than my capacity. And so, right, because if, if I have four elements in a five capacity array and I add a fifth one, then I'm perfectly fine. But as soon as I go, oopsie, my capacity is the same value, then I would be adding the fifth element to element five but we only go up to element four. So this is where we have to put an else in here and we can say, oops, okay, this thing's gotta be out of, this thing's out of touch here. Now we have to set up a whole new data structure. And so um, at the end of the day, we're still gonna do the same stuff here. We're gonna increase size and all this stuff, but at the end of the day, we gotta play around with this. And so let's just say we just multiply and just double the capacity. Let's just say that. So we're just gonna make this thing, it's gonna start out with five elements and now it's gonna be 10 elements or it's going to be 10 elements and now it's going to be 20. The real function is more of a curve. I haven't been able to find the actual functionality like the, you know, to figure out what function it actually uses to determine because you don't want to just have 100,000 elements and then go, how about 200,000? Because realistically, that's not going to happen. So it, it, it does ramp up, but it only adds about 10% as it goes or 20% as it goes or something like that. But anyway, if my capacity doubles, and then what I can do here, I can set up a new pointer to this, I'll just call it new array. And so I can say new int, and I can, this new capacity. Okay, so I set up my new array, and now I'm ready to copy everything over. Because again, this old one, it's, you know, it's too, you know, the, the amount of space we need is too much for what we've got. So we've got to make do. And so we can take a for loop here for every int i equals zero. i is less than size, plus plus i. I can go ahead then and say, okay, for every element um, in, in the new array, new array at the i location is going to be equal to array at the, the i location. Or new, yeah, array at the i location. And so here we go here. So capacity is double. We set it up. We copy everything over to the new spot. Okay. And so, okay, fair enough. And then we can do what we need to do here. Right? Because the size hasn't the size hasn't changed. The capacity has, the array or the new array has, if you want to think of it this way, then you say say, okay, put this thing on the at the tail end of this thing now, and then increase the size. Okay. And then what I can do is delete whatever is stored previously in array. Because everything's been copied over. And so we have a second copy now in the new location. And then we can say, oh, my array is now equal to new array. And I believe that does it. And then the capacity should be doubled and everything should be copied over. The new element should be thrown into it. The old, el the old array is deleted and the new one is now put in its place. So we can try this now. And so let's just see, let's just set up an empty vector and just, let's just 25 times or 22 times over. Let's see. And if I made a mistake, I made a mistake. We'll figure it out. And so I'll do v dot pushback, and I'll just put it push i into there, and I'll print out the whole thing. Print out v with an m. Oops. And let's see where this takes us. Oh, I was not expecting. Hold on, I was not expecting an end line because I already put an end line in there. So let me try this. There we go. Okay. Oh, I forgot these values get garbage very quickly. But as you can see now, the first five go in, and then when I add the sixth one, it does exactly what it's supposed to. It, it takes all of the elements, it generates a new space that's 10 large, moves everything over, adds the new one in, and then now there's four spaces. And so th it's just unfortunate that this number is absolutely huge when it comes to the way it's, un the way it's initialized. But you get the point. It, and then up to 10, because it doubled the capacity. So up to 10, it's perfectly fine now. And then now it, and then it goes, okay, once it hits 11, now it's doubled. And then once it goes up to 20, it's the same deal. And now there's 20 extra spaces. Now there's 18 spaces when this thing completes. I thought I was smart by putting it so it wouldn't flow over to multiple lines, but what do I know? And so... But you see, 22 numbers, 18 extra spaces now. And so it's working. Our code is working perfectly. In the normal case, all we're doing is shifting and moving something over. And in the other case, we have to, you know, basically we have to, we have to copy. And this, this, this is, you can tell here, this could be a huge operation. 
because you could have to copy 100,000 elements from point A to point B. Ask the operating system for that much more memory. Hey, give me half a meg of memory. Hopefully, you're, hopefully the computer has that available for you. And there's so much that can go wrong, especially for lar as you go larger and larger and larger, because you're asking for more memory, and the larger the memory you want, the less the chance that the computer actually has that in a contiguous block for you. And so part of it is that's why a lot of these other data structures can work very well too, is that I don't have to have a contiguous block of memory, like list and set and map and all of these, and they don't have to have just one huge block of memory to work. But at the end of the day, I think we're good here. That handles pushback. Those are the only two situations that we have to worry. And of course, there's more to think about what happens if I can't allocate and this and that and everything. But all of that security is beyond the high level understanding. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. All right, so pushback is working pretty well here. We've already kind of worked through it. And so you think, oh, popback sounds, oh my goodness, it sounds so difficult. But it really isn't. And so, because you're just put, popping the, the last element off of the stack. And so if I implement this, and it's presuming there's elements in there, this is where you start having the, the fun of what can go wrong and what do I do about it? That, because I am the one who has to worry about this now. I can't just, just take solace in the fact that someone else wrote the code. What would they do? And I go, nope, we, we wrote the code. I just got to find my popback function here. And so at, at its core, that's it, because I don't have to eliminate the data, right? We have already proven that there's already just garbage data sitting in those unused spaces anyway. So all I have to do, oops, lowercase size, is just say, okay, size, you're one less. But the problem, of course, is what happens if the size is already zero? And so what does a vector do? It, 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 like what does the true vector class do, do when you try to do that? It looks like, let's see, let's see, pop back. Let's see what it says. Does not return, it removes. It probably crashes. It probably, throw, uh, it probably throws an exception. So we can do the same thing. We can, and I'm not gonna worry about typing the exception out or anything like that. Pop back on empty vector. And so that's, that's the error that'll be thrown. And if the size is greater than zero, because the size will never be less than zero, if the size is greater than zero, then we'll just reduce the size down. And so we can try that now here, too. We can do this. And so I can just for, or while, here, we can pretend like we're smart about this. While v.empty equals false, do a pop back and print out the results. And just to put this on, let me just, uh, instead of 22, now that we know that it kind of works, let's do 11 and see what we get. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But then we didn't get the exception because so we, we this is what this was the test while it's not empty. So you can see here we started out with eleven elements, and it's duplicate. We push, push, push. We, you know, we get ourselves up to eleven elements. We work our way down to zero, and then all those elements are still located there. So technically speaking, those values are stored in there. There's no reason to delete them because why would I delete them if I'm not deleting any of these other crazy values here as well? And so just to say. To get that exception thrown, I would have to do, what, what if I just did while true? Keep on popping, right? And so, hello? Okay, so that's weird. It, it's, it has halted. My program has halted. You can see that here. But I do not know. Oh, <laughs> ah, my Oh, minus one for me. Semicolon. There we go. So, yep, that's what happens. It's an infinite loop. All true to nothing. So now, let's see. Okay, there we go. Unhandled exception. And so, yep, we'd have to do a try-catch block if we wanted to worry about that. Because, because, yes, I'm trying to pop an empty stack, and that exception's being thrown, and I'm not catching it. And so let me put this back so we're happy. All right, and make sure this is working again, and then we're ready to move on. Pop, how hard was that, right? If we, if we could just trust everybody to use our code right, it would have been a one-liner. But otherwise, we have to start thinking with exceptions and start thinking, if someone else is going to use my code, I have no idea who's using my code and how and why. I'm going to tell you something's wrong. It's up to you to decide how to fix that problem. All right, so over here, another operator I want to create. 
is something like this. Let's just nail out the two I want to do now, or uh, let's just nail out all the functions. Let's just put them all in the header, and then we'll work our way back. So yes, I would like to be able to set one array or one vector equal to another. And so the only tricky part comes with what if the size of the, the newer one is bigger than the one that you already have that you're trying to copy into. Otherwise, everything else is going to be pretty simple stuff. And so we're, we're going to want to do that. And then we're going to want to be able to access, basically by reference here, and just to say, like, this function here, I want to do vector reference. And it's the operator, new one here, square brackets. And I can say, give me an integer for the index. And so I can square bracket this thing just like an array, and you can say, okay, vector, give me the not, you know, give me nine in square brackets, and then this will go into this function, and I can say, okay, I can return the ninth element of this thing. And so there's two functions for this in the standard library. There's this, and there's also the at function, which we can say this one just does a blind check, or just just does it. It just doesn't even look, doesn't care, and this one does throws an exception if something's wrong. And so the other thing here is it returns the first element, so vector. These are all references because they're because you don't want to return copies of these things. You want to return the real stuff in case you want to do stuff with it, is the front function. Oops, let me use capital A. Front, give me the first element, and then give me the back element. And these do not do any range checking. The only one that does do range checking is the at function. So if things are wrong here, just, oopsie, that's no, well, or, I don't know if that's 100% true, because yeah, no check, but that doesn't mean it doesn't throw an exception, right? So it just, we, I'm not going to 100% go to see what the behavior of the standard template library is and mimic that exactly. We're just going to do our, what we feel is best for the situation. Okay, so then this will cover all the other, this will pretty much cover a lot of everything else. We just have a few more things after this then. Okay, so we just got to find where they put all these functions. Okay, here we go. So let's see. We can do the, we can do this. This is, you know, well, let's do the easy ones. The hardest one is pretty much, uh, is this one here is the uh, equals one, of course. As I was describing, there's a little more of a problem that can go down. But this, I can just say, oh, return array at the index location. That's it, one-liner. It's really not going to let me do it. Vector reference cannot be by type int. OK. Oh, <laughs> data type, int reference. Sorry. This is all int, not vector. Oh, yeah, yeah. Should I start over? I don't know. Nah. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so coming back here, and the same goes for all of these now. Now these are all int references instead of... You get ahead of yourself, you start thinking these things out, and you're like, oh, it's real, you know, it's difficult for everybody sometimes. Okay, so, because yes, get me this element, and, and this element inside of my array is going to be an int, but I want to treat it like a reference, return the address so that I can set it equal to things, or I can, I can modify it, I can pass it around, and, you know, just like it's a memory address. So, yeah, this is, this is much better now that I have it working the way it's supposed to. Now everything's happy. And so now it'll return an int, and it'll return it as a reference. So then this is the same deal. This is exactly the same stuff, except if my index is less than zero, or my index is greater than or equal to size. Then I want to throw an exception, and I already have it somewhere in here, so I don't have to type all of it out. And uh, here we go. And just say throw exception. Index out of range. Something like that. And so that throws an exception if it's less than zero, or, and because greater than or equal to size means it's outside the bounds because everything is zero based and not one based. And so there's that. This one, these are just one-liners then. These are just return array at zero. And it says it doesn't do any array, any bounds checking, so just go with it. And this returns array at size minus one. Take whatever sizes, move over one, that's the last element. So those are easy, right? I mean, just at the end of the day. But now this tricky one here. The, and so no matter what, me, my values are going to go away. Because I'm the, I, me, this is the left-hand side. 
So the right hand side is what's going to be copied into me. So really all I have to do here before I do the copy of everything is just to say, okay, if RHS's size is greater than my size, then I have to do some work here. And I basically have to say, okay, let's delete my array. And I don't have to keep it because all that information is going to go away anyway. And then I could say, okay, array is now equal to a new int, which is RHS.size. Oops, lowercase. I'm getting thrown up by the lowercase and the uppercase here, but that's okay. So, okay, set up the new one. And if you want, add the 5 to it or whatever. And then it's just, it, it just now, no matter what, whether you erase it and put a new one in or not, now it's just a matter of going in and copying everything. For int i equals 0, i is less than rhs.size plus plus i. And it's basically a copy of the other thing here. I'm just going to say my, uh, my array at the i value is going to be equal to the rhs's array at the i value. I'll probably get that same weird warning as I did before. Not this time, though? Oh, what is this? Oh, that array, that's it. Nope. Capital S. Okay, so start from zero, go up into the right hand side size, and just keep on copying into this new array, and just copy over. The capacity, uh oh, okay, so then if I do do this, I have to fix up a few things here. Granted, right? So I have to say here, okay, my size is going to be equal to RHS's size. Okay, and so my if I you know, okay right no matter what my size is going to be equal to the size of whatever got copied in, and so the and the array pointer has been modified. The only thing left is the capacity, and so this is going to be changed. If you want to think of it this way, something like this. So let's so again coming back to these three variables we have to maintain at all times. No matter what we do at the end of the day, the sizes are going to be identical of each one of these. And so also then the capacity only changes if I resize this thing. So only in here, when I delete off the old one and I set up the new one, then I have to worry about the capacity being larger. And then and then anyway, the, and then the array pointer is being modified and manipulated. No matter what, whether I delete it or not, or set up a new one or not, then at the end of the day, we're still pointing to an array of integers, and they get filled in accordingly. The size is pointing to the where, way it needs to. Capacity is pointing to where it needs to. And everybody should be happy. So let's see. Let's try this out then. So then I can have vector v with all this cool stuff added to it. I can have vector w with... Uh, with nothing in it, I'll just maybe one element here. I'll just say pushback, and then we can say four, and then I can say w equals v, and then I can call and do my c out on w. And let's just see what happens. And let me get rid of this print for 11 times over. So let's just say, okay, v has 11 items in it, w has one, and then we're, then we're going to copy them. So you can see this here. Oops. I need to return a value here. And so I, yeah, because I'll need to return star this. Because I need to return a reference, and I'm going to return the left hand side, which is me. And there's that warning again. Stupid, stupid warning here. Okay, so let's build this again. There we go. Okay, so now we hit the breakpoint. V has 11 elements in it. And again, we can't see much. We'd have to use the print. Capacity is 20. And so we know that's 1 through 11. And so V is that W right now has one size 5 capacity and the only element is in there is 4 and so when we come out W better be the same as V. Oops, <laughs> I better hit F10 instead of F5. Okay, and so now W has size 11 capacity 16. Remember, we're not keeping the same capacity, we're just adding 5 units to whatever the other one had. But otherwise, let's see about the print. Oops, where is it? Hold on, let me just... Let me run it one more time just to make sure that that's what's printing out. Yep, and it is. And there it is. The W has been copied over appropriately. The new storage space has been set aside. The old one's been deleted. We copied over from V all the elements. They have their own copies now. And then you have five elements left over to add to it. So it did its job. This did its job. 
And so, and what would happen if it was the other way around? Well, it wouldn't need, again, it wouldn't need to go ahead and do all this extra work, but it still needs to copy. The size is the same, the capacity stays the same, and everybody's going to be happy. And so there we go. There's our equals operator. Okay, so I have no idea how long we've been going. I just know I have about 10 or 11 parts to this so far. And so the final couple functions are things that we need to do, like insert and erase and clear. That's about it. There is you know, the, the book shows more than just those kind of functions, and there's iterators involved and all sorts of crazy stuff. We're gonna, you know, we're not gonna use iterators, but we're gonna try to mimic the same behavior. So it makes sense just to fill in the last functions over here in the header, and then just fill them in with implementation, and then we can call it a day here. So we already did push back, we already did pop back. We definitely want to do an insert. We want to be able to go ahead and insert something into this thing. So I want to say avoid function insert, and I want to say, and normally we would use a, 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 an iterator for this thing, but I can say, okay, you know, I want to insert, I want to say, okay, at which index, in front of which index, and then at which value. And we're just going to keep it simple where we can only insert one thing, we're not going to go crazy and fill in, like, give me a hundred of them or something, just which index and which value am I going to put in? There's insert, and then I'm going to do erase. Same deal. I don't need a value, though. I just need which index am I going to erase. And I just need to call it something like that. Erase. And then the easiest one, sounds like it'll be challenging, but the easiest one is going to be clear. And we have to watch, we always have to watch out for clear when we're dealing with real, with real data. Because if we're dealing with a vector of pointers, the vector will never actually delete the memory that the, every, the pointers are pointing to. And if you want that, you have to explicitly do that. But since we're just dealing with a vector of integers, or an array of integers, we don't have to worry about all those extra details. So coming back again, so I mean, we did the really hard work at the beginning when we just, just delete that array. That is all we have to do in the destructor. That's all we ever have to do. Because that's what we do here. We do it in a few places. Every time I need to reallocate, I'm not destroying this object. I'm just getting rid of the memory and replacing it with a bigger splotch of memory. Okay, so just these are the last three functions that I wanted to handle for this class. And so put these guys in, find them in here somewhere. We're writing a lot of code today. And clear, very easy. Size equals zero. Just like it was when we started. The capacity can stay the same. Up lower case size. The, the size needs to go back to zero, so if I put another element in, it's at element zero. The capacity can stay the same. The array pointers can stay the same. That's it. That's all there is to it. So pretty cool stuff there. And so um, erase, pretty simple. So the erase is just going ahead and now what happens if the index value is not in the range? That's the only problem, right? So if index is less than zero, or the index is greater than or equal to size, throw an exception. We have that exception. And so I can say erase index out of range. I can say erase index out of range. And here I could say at, just so, so there's a little difference here, right? So you're like, okay, if the index, wait, did I do, let me make sure I did this right. If index is less than zero or index is greater than or equal to size. Yep, same deal. Say, so, okay, index is out of range. Otherwise, what I need to do is shift everything from that position over to the left and reduce the size by one. I'm, I never have to worry about changing capacity. So I have to do a for loop. I say for int uh, i equals index. Starting there, all right, um, i is less than size minus 1, I believe. We can try that out. I think that's how it needs to go. And then I can just say, okay, my array at the i location is going to be equal to the array at the i plus 1 location. And then when it's all said and done here, I have to say minus minus size because, again, I've, de I've, de I've decreased the size by 1 by erasing this thing. And it, so it's no longer a part of everything, but everything else is shifted over. So let's try that. And so erase. So we push back. We do this copy. We print it. Oops. Let me put this back. Okay. Yep. We'll push back the four. We'll copy over. And then we'll say erase. 
and we'll say, say okay, erase element four, and, and then we'll say erase element seven, and then print again. What do we get? Oops. What do we get here? So we have one through eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up. Oh, let me. Here, I'm sorry. I meant to print every time. I erase that. Just blanket. Do it, and then. Oops. Okay, so let's do it. Let's see this again. Okay, where did it go? Oh, this is stupid. Right? Okay. Okay, so here we go. So we're starting out with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, like we were talking before with five empty spaces. I erase element 4, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is the 5. And you see, I've done that. The 5 has been erased, everything else has shifted over. And then the 11 hasn't been modified because it's no longer part of the array because the array ends at the 10th element now and everybody's been shifted over accordingly. And then now when I say erase 7, you go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The 9 gets erased, everything gets shifted over, and the same deal goes. There's two 11s sitting in here, but they're not, they're garbage at this point. There are nine elements in this thing now because I've erased two of the 11 elements and everybody is in the correct position and everybody's happy. And if I break this with a negative four, you get that exception that isn't handled because, because you're trying something that's out of range. And so even with this, I say, okay, I have an 11 member array or a vector. I try to use 11 that breaks because yes, I'm trying to access outside of my vector, but if I use 10, it's totally legitimate because now the 11 will be erased immediately. And so you don't have to care about any of these values. You don't have to care, you know, like, is that right, 10, then 11? It has no bearing on you whatsoever as long as you're erasing the correct stuff here. All right, so the last item up for bids here is the insert function, and it's a little more complex. That's I spent some time, I just wrote it out, and it's not perfect, but it works, and maybe I'm a little lazy here, but I've been talking for a couple hours, at least here, maybe not in the video to you, but I've been going at this for a while here. So if I'm trying to insert something, insert a value into the vector at a, sp a specific location, I do the same check. Oop, let me just make sure. The insert index out of range, if it is, and then so now I know I'm in range. And so I know I need to insert something. So if the size is not equal to the capacity, well, then all I have to do is shift everything from that index point over one and then pop the new one into place. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying, int, and I'm moving, and sh and it's hard because I'm shifting right to left instead of left to right because I have to make sure I keep everything going. And if I get, let, let's say it's, it's always reversed for me, left to right, left to right, left to right, mm -hmm. everything shifts over. And then I'll actually have a duplicate value in that index spot, but then I jam the new value in. And so the size increases by one, the index ends up in the, in, the correct value ends up in the index spot as if it was just like a, just like putting a value in a spot and then everything else gets copied over. But the big difference here is what happens if the size is equal to the capacity or technically greater than, which it should never ever do. And that's where this kind of code falls in. And what I did was I basically stole the copy, the code, I copied it from above here from the pushback. What happens if I need to expand the size of my vector or the size of my array under the hood? And so I, I just repurposed this and just said, okay, just Copy, and I said, it's not ideal, but today is not an ideal kind of day. Today is just to get it working. Day two would be, let's get it work better. But I just, I made the extra space. I copied everything over. And so that's why I'm saying this isn't, this is a minus one for efficiency. But now that I've copied everything over into a new space that has double the capacity, if I call myself again, like I said, oh, it's almost like recursive in a way. If I call insert with the same index and the same value, this time around, it's going to go to this part of the if and add the thing in appropriately. I don't have to write more code. So I can, and so when, and then when this falls through and the else comes around, the recursion ends and the insert falls through and I come back and I'm done. So I don't, don't have to write the code again because again, I, this is only in taking place because I need to save more space. And once I give myself more space and I try it again, it's going to work because there's no doubt that the size is going to be smaller than the capacity. And so here is the, that's the code. And here is the code that I just, the tester code. And then here you can see it all working out. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from my initializer list printed out. 
I go, I add, because I have five empty spaces, I print out, I add four nine times, I'm sorry, I add nine five times at the four location, right? So in front of the five, I'm going to continue adding nines five times over. And there you can see now I've exhausted. The capacity is now full. The size is now equal to the capacity. So when I do this one more time, you can see I did everything right. I'm adding one more nine to this. This thing is now bigger than it was a moment ago. And now because I, you know, there's now 11 spots or however many, how many, I don't even know. 13, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever. You can see because of the way we duplicated everything for the capacity that now there's an, a ton of extra space available be, and everything got copied over correctly and then the value got stored in the correct place. And then if you want to, you could see the erase and all this stuff too. And so, um, wait a minute. 1, 2, 3, how many prints? 1, 2, there's 4 prints. So what the heck, hold on. Hmm. That only printed three things. At least it looked like it only printed three things. There we go. I don't know what's up with that. I feel like I just ran it. But then you can see here, coming back then, after that last one with the final erase of location seven, which happens to be one of the nines, and then now this, it's all garbage except for this one value, which is we've talked about earlier. And so everybody's happy. It works out perfectly fine. And so that covers pretty much everything there is. There's a few other functions, a few other things, odds and ends. No real security checks. I mean, there's a reason why the standard template library code's been used for all these years. It's because it's been tested. It's efficient. It, it, you know, it, it hits all those marks. Things that our code has zero going for it because we just wrote it. It's kind of half hacked at the end here because I just wanted to get it done. No testing whatsoever. And so you're up against those two things. I'll use the standard template library. And so game programmers of years past used to not trust anyone else's code. They'd be like, I'll rewrite a vector. I'll rewrite a linked list. I'm like, I'm, because they are like, I'm faster and I'm better. I'm like, but you're reinventing the wheel. You're spending time and efforts that could be making the game. And finally, it seems like game developers are kind of getting around that at least a little bit. They're not writing their own game engines so much, as much anymore. They're not. They're using Unity and Unreal and CryEngine and you name it. All the and if they're not making their own, because it, I'd be, it wouldn't it be nicer just to pay someone for use of their engine than it is to spend years and years and years to come up with something that isn't as good. And that's what this is. We're you know why would we write our own code and create this other than for an educational setting? Why would we do this when the real version is ten times a hundred times better? And so at the end of the day, I hope you learned a lot about pointers, moving data around, copying data, object-oriented programming. We did a crazy amount, right? Look at all this. We did this whole thing in however long it took to go through it. As we started with just an empty blank, uh, empty blank main file, and this is what we came up with in an hour or an hour and a half or wherever we're at. All right, so video's over. As always, swordb at cod.edu is a great way to get a hold of me if I made a mistake here, because I didn't test 100% of my code here. And so if you find a mistake, let me know. I can fix it, and I'll get back to you. Same with uh, sending a comment here on YouTube. And uh, where are we going next? The next video is moving into double-ended queues, stacks queues, and that sort of, uh, those kind of data structures. And so, and those use the vector, the true standard template library vector as, well, the deck doesn't necessarily, but the stack and the queue use them as what we call adapter classes. You'll learn all about that in the next video. So as always, thanks for sticking out with me here and uh, have a great day. We'll see you next time.